Whether or not you are a researcher, a postdoc, a PhD student, a master's student, or undergraduate, these Chrome extensions will help make your research more efficient, make you more productive, and importantly, all of the ones in this list, they have features that are completely free, so why not give them a go? Here are my top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight apps. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I've used, how to make a perfect abstract, the TEDx talk I gave, and the podcast I've been on, and more. It's exclusive content only available on that newsletter. So go sign up now, and I'll be in your email inbox soon. Look at this, I'm down here now, I'm in this little bubble. So the first one I wanna talk about is Science Research Assistant. Now this is fantastic if you're in the early stages, if you're doing a literature review, and what it does, it takes all of the grunt work out of doing searches across multiple search engines for science. So here I have a paper, and essentially all I have to do is select which papers and which journals I want to search in. So up here, I've got all of this, um, I can select different general science publishers, I can select medicine, biology, chemistry ones, social sciences, meta search, all of these different things. Essentially, I'll just click where I want to do different searches. And once this is all set up, then I can either click in there and enter a custom search phrase. But what I really like is that if I want to look for something like here, flexible organic photovoltaics, I can click here and do science search and you'll see that it goes to all of these different places instantly, all of these tabs open up and I can essentially look now for all of the stuff that would have taken me ages to go through. So I've got Wikipedia set up, I've got Journal of Biomedical Sciences, clearly there'll be nothing there. Um, I've got the BMJ, I've got Google Scholar, I've got PLOS Medicine and wherever else I've set it up. So all you have to do is click up here, select where you want to go, and it searches in all those places for you. I think it's a great time saver, and uh, go check it out. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is Digo. So once you've installed it, you'll get this little tab up here, and you can bookmark, read and annotate, annotate PDFs, anna annotate screenshots, and you can also save video screenshots as well. And one thing I like about this, this is how I would use it if I was a researcher. Let's say you're doing a literature review. Let's say you're doing an introduction to a paper. Let's say you want to just delve into the research. You want to organize your ideas a little bit more. One thing I really like about this is the outliner. Once you get these outliners, you uh, let's have a look, let's go to test. And you can see here, Let's get rid of that one to start with. But we've got this kind of blank bullet point area. Now, one thing I love about this is that you can select some like text and then you drag and drop it across. And essentially it gives you not only the uh, information where you may want to organize your ideas in a bullet point form, but it also gives you a hyperlink to where you got it. And then on that page, you can also highlight different places. So if we go over here, we can see we can annotate screenshots, annotate PDFs, all sorts of things. Um, for example, here, if I wanted to save this, I can highlight it by going here to Digo and then say highlight and I can highlight it there. I can also choose to annotate a PDF um, by clicking here or selecting a PDF from my um, from my computer. And overall, I think that this is fantastic for organizing your thoughts. So if I had to go to a number of different places, I could then grab this. Let's open up the outliner. Then I've got all of my outline here. I just drag that across. And once again, I can organize my thoughts, drag and drop it up and down. I can also do a bunch of other things like adding a comment to a web page. So let's say put this in introduction, save that there. And then when I go back to that web page, as long as I've got the extension installed, it will just save the highlights and the comments. So overall, it's a nice way to kind of get your ideas into a certain format, into a certain order for a literature review. Um, I wouldn't rely on it for long-term um, project planning necessarily, but for those initial ideas coming together and to have it hyperlinked and then to have notes on the web page, I think it's a fantastic tool and browser extension. So go check out Digo. 
Another great tool that is incredibly obvious but is worth mentioning in this list is Google Scholar Browser Extension. It's super easy. All you have to do is click up here and enter your search term. If you are on a page that has a paper already, it will give you a little bit of information whether or not you can get the PDF or other things. You can also star things and there are plenty of other settings to make sure you can optimize your search and uh, your analysis of different articles. So here is a fantastic tool, Google Scholar, click here, enter it, goes to Google Scholar. What more do you need? Definitely should be on your browser. Okay, I think this is probably one of my favorites, Lazy Scholar. Now, everyone likes to consider themselves very efficient, and you can even capture that in the term lazy. If you wanna be lazy and get all of these different features around papers, around peer-reviewed articles, this is a fantastic browser extension to install on your Chrome browser or anything that runs Chromium. So as you can see, I am on a paper page and you get this bar at the top. One thing I love about this bar is it's just a little tiny snapshot of stuff that normally you would spend ages trying to find. So you've got the paper, you've got citations. If you click here, you can actually get the citation. If I pull up a notepad, you will see Boom, you immediately get a citation and you can change it to a range of different forms. Now, I don't wanna save that. So you can select a range of different formats. It really works, so I love it for that. You can see if you can get the full text in the bar. Fantastic citation count, related citations, altmetric score, and more. So it's just a great snapshot and a toolbar that just shows you exactly what you need. You can share it, you've got journal ranks, all sorts of things, and this little tab here is fantastic because it gives you a load of different information about the paper that you're currently reading. So it's got the reference list, brilliant. And one thing I love is that you've got this abstract methods that essentially outline of the paper. So you can just click and go there immediately without having to scroll. One of the things about sort of like scanning papers is you can easily get bogged down in the scrolling and then being like, well, what was I searching for? This gives you an, a really easy way to navigate HTML documents uh, when they're shown on a web page. So I absolutely love it. You can jump to conclusions, jump to thermal stability tests. Oh, brilliant, love it. Another thing is, don't know what that does, but I'm sure you would do. And also a load of other information. Um, it definitely is the most efficient way of searching literature and getting the most from the current sort of paper that you're reading on a web page. So definitely download it. I think it will be a massive time saver for a load of different researchers. All right, the next browser extension is Snippet. Snippet is a fantastic way to capture bits of information from across the web. So when you've installed it, you can go to any web page and then all you have to do is select what you want and then you just drag it a little bit downwards. Then you head over to your snippet dashboard and you can see that you have captured where um, you've captured the information that you've just dragged down. So you also get a site, you also get summaries, you also get snips. Now I think I would use this if I was just doing like my first amazing broad search, if I was just sort of like going in and just going hardcore on finding information. Now, I think uh, this can be a fantastic thing if you just want to, you know, go a little bit deeper into something you found, but not right there and then. So overall, I really feel like this is a fantastic tool just for grabbing those little bits of inspiration as you're doing your research. You get a link to where you grabbed the information at the top here, and uh, you also get the snips that you've taken. You can see I clicked it and it took me right to the uh, paper that I was snipping from. So Snippet is a fantastic tool for capturing those uh, moments of inspiration as you're aimlessly sometimes, but uh, it's browsing the web. Another browser extension is Unpaywall. Now this one's become relatively popular because it just essentially takes all the hard work out of finding PDFs or downloads of full articles. So on here you can see I've got this uh, paper and on the side here I've got a green tab. When I push it, I get the full um, I get the full paper just like that. So you can't quite see, let me just move that across. You get this thing here. There we are, I'll move it across. When you push that, you get taken to the full paper. Now, if it doesn't have a little tab here or it's um, not green, it means that it is not currently available. So it says that 
unpaywall extension couldn't find any legal open access version of this article. So there are some limitations because it sticks with the legal stuff. So that brings me on to my next one. If you want to ensure that you have access to every single peer reviewed article out there, check out Sci-Hub X now. Now it's a little browser extension. So this is an example of a, um, of a paper where I wouldn't normally be able to get access because it's I have to purchase the PDF. Now, if you click up into the extension, it'll take you immediately to Sci-Hub, which is a fantastic tool for opening up any um, peer reviewed paper so you don't have to pay for it. Now, I don't know the legality of this, um, but I have used it for research just to kind of like find a paper where I've gone like, oh, is this useful? Yes, it's useful. Um, a lot of institutions provide institutional access and I've used this if I'm away from my institution or if I just can't get hold of a paper in any other way. Now, uh, you know, this is a tool that's, that's uh, marred in controversy. So maybe it's something that you feel comfortable with, but Sci-Hub, um, um, X now is a fantastic place just for getting all of the peer reviewed papers that otherwise you wouldn't be able to access. Now, I am all about having moments of focus throughout the day. If you want to find out how I structure my day, go check out my other video, I'll put a link here. But essentially, you are looking for put, placing your attention on certain things throughout the day for about an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hours if you can do it. There's a great browser extension that helps encourage you. It's called Forest. If you click up here, you end up growing a forest with your attention. So you have a tree that you start planting and then you can essentially change the amount of time that you want to stay completely focused. You can have a block list and there are plenty of other settings. So you can have a block list. Now I am always on Reddit so I would put Reddit in there no doubt where you're allowed to go and obviously more about forest and about staying focused by planting trees. I have not planted any trees so I'm going to do that today um, but essentially you just grow a forest. It's a nice way of keeping track of all of the moments where you've just being completely focused on your tasks at hand. Um, and these deep work, you know, by Cal Newport is a fantastic uh, system for getting more efficient and more productive throughout the day. So forest, stay focused, be present. I think it's great for researchers because it helps you do just that. So there we have it. There are all of the Chrome extensions that you can use to make research more efficient. I know there are heaps more. Let me know in the comments which ones you love, but also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I am on a mission to help academics, PhD, postdoc, or otherwise. It's got my insider forum and my ebook, the ultimate academic writing toolkit. Go check it out. It's getting loads of great reviews. So I'll see you in the next video.